By many measures, 2023 was a year of opposites for Australia's ecosystems and agriculture. Environmental conditions were overall less than the previous year, but the National Conditions Score was still good at 7.5 out of 10. That's the main conclusion from Australia's environment, the latest in an annual series of environmental condition reports released by TURN and the Australian National University on Tuesday, 19th of March, 2024. The report and its website provide a summary of key environmental indicators and how they changed in 2023. The Australia's Environment Report and Data Explorer are created by analysing vast amounts of satellite and on-ground data on a supercomputer using algorithms and computer prediction models. Of particular importance are long-term time series such as those created by many ANCRIS projects including TURN. These time series allow long-term changes, patterns and trends in our environment to be assessed which is critical to the ongoing management of our environment. The algorithms and models use these open data to summarise 18 key environmental indicators. They include indicators of weather, water, fire, soil, vegetation and biodiversity. From the indicators, seven were used to calculate overall environmental condition scores for the country and for any region. Twenty twenty three was a year of opposites. It had a wet start, then some dry and unseasonably warm months, and towards the end of the year, some wet conditions again. Globally, climate change is accelerating. In 2023, we saw the highest temperatures in the atmosphere and in the oceans that were ever recorded, the least sea ice ever observed, and a rapid increase in sea level. The oceans around Australia were warmer than average, but not as warm as the previous year. The recovery of the Great Barrier Reef stabilised with no bleaching events in 2023. Australia's population reached 27 million people in 2023. That's up from 19 million people in 2000. That is a 41% increase. Australia's emissions are very high by world standards and went up again after falling for four years. Increased emissions from transport were the main reason. Taken over the year, rainfall was near average, but May to October were very dry. There were 82 days over 35 degrees in 2023, averaged across Australia. That is about six days or 8% more than only a decade ago. River flows, wetlands and water reservoirs all declined from the very high 2022 levels, but were still well above average. Soil moisture across much of Australia declined quite steeply after a wet start to the year, but increased again during the last few months. Vegetation leaf area was less than the previous year, but still above average. Vegetation growth conditions were very good almost everywhere, thanks to good water availability and warm, sunny winter months. After an early start to the fire season in August, fears of a very severe fire season were not realised as rains returned in November. A record 130 species were added to the EPBC Act to list of threatened species in 2023, bringing the total number to 2,098, a 47% increase since 2000. Climate change was identified as a key threat to 87% of newly listed and uplisted species in 2023. For the remaining 13% of listed and uplisted species, extinction risk factors included cane toad poisoning, habitat loss due to clearing and mining, myrtle rust, and water extraction. The Threatened Species Index estimates changes in the abundance of threatened and near-threatened species with a three-year lag. A major update for threatened birds in 2023 revealed continuous and compounding declines across Australia. Terrestrial birds showed the greatest declines since 2000, with declines for migratory shorebirds and marine birds being less severe, but still concerning. The trends for threatened mammals and plants tell a similar story of decline, but with some stabilisation for our threatened mammal populations in recent years. Our unique and precious biodiversity remains under considerable pressure, and this will increase in coming years as climate impacts worsen. But the evidence is mounting that when we enact protection and invest in conservation, we can bend the curve of species declines. Report cards can be downloaded for any administrative or geographic region of Australia, including local government areas, electorates and bioregions, for example. 
Produced annually, the Joint Turn ANU Environmental Condition Reporting complements Australia's State of the Environment Reporting. You can explore the suite of products and download the data at osm.turn.org.au.